Hi guys, um, I'm back with another book review. So, a um, couple things. Um, number one, I feel like I look way too shiny. Um, <laughs> number one, um, I'm trying a different um, recording style. This is um, the cinematic mode on my phone, so tell me if you like this better than what I was previously um, using, which is just a regular video. Um, so there's that. And also I've noticed that you guys really like my um, personal memoir reviews. So I will definitely start to focus on those. Those are very popular, but um, this one's not. <laughs> this one's a book called Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. And this is not my typical read, okay? So this is, um, my typical reads are personal memoir, really sad books about race and racism, like DEI work, and then um, uh, murder mystery, psychological thrillers. Those are normally my stomping grounds. This is like a romantic coming of age story, which is new for me. Um, so what drew me into this, not being like my regular reads, was the cover. I'll flash the cover on the screen. Um, I love me some black art and that's what the cover was to me it was just gorgeous black art um so the book is about a girl named grace who um is graduating college with an astronomy degree and basically does not know what to do next in her life and as a black woman it's hard for her to break into her field so she's facing all those struggles and then she was brought up by two very different parents. Mom's like a free spirit farmer. Uh, mom is also white, so the character is mixed. And then dad is like a very strict general. So she's, but she lives with dad and she's like under dad's strictness and rules and whatever have you. And um, she's feeling that pressure to be perfect, and then she goes to Vegas with her friends and marries an Asian woman named Yuki, okay? And she finds Yuki, <laughs> she finds Yuki who runs a radio show in New York. Um, Grace lives in Seattle, Washington, I wanna say. Um, so she finds Yuki and then she's like navigating whether or not she wants to stay married to Yuki. She ends up moving in with Yuki, who's the girl she, married in Vegas okay and then she ends up having a, like a mental breakdown about her perfectionism and wanting to be perfect and to find the perfect career and she ends up going to therapy and working on her issues with her dad and working out issues with her like family or people she considers her family um and learning some of their dark secrets it's a decent book and and okay so with me saying it's a decent book know that this isn't my typical read so there are i've got my notes here per usual of some things that i thought about the book and the plot it itself um the writing style overall morgan rogers writing style is just so freaking po poetic I, I was just like the whole time i was reading the book i was like is this a collection of poetry <laughs> like it was so romantic and i'm not used to that style but in a way it was slightly refreshing because it was so different from what i normally read um but when i was reading it or listening you know you know i'm listening um i had it on audible uh as i was reading it i want to say like halfway through you get kind of bored with grace's story and um you just do. And like I lost interest and it really slowed me down to reading the book until like her brother friend Raj shows up to New York to like talk to her. And I was like, ooh, what's going on? Because she's like uh, married, she's like with Yuki, the girl she married in Vegas. <laughs> so she's with Yuki and he shows up and I was like, oh my gosh, is there gonna be a showdown? Like is he in love with Grace, blah, 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 blah. And that didn't happen. And I felt like it was kind of a missed opportunity because that would have been real spicy. I mean, there was some like a come to Jesus moment where he revealed some secrets. She revealed some secrets. They fought and made up. But, all right. <laughs> but I feel like it would have been a little juicier if he had been like in love with her or something like that. Um, yeah, it picked up towards the end when her when Raj came and then her and Yuki had like 
this weird falling out so that was the other thing like her falling out with Yuki didn't make sense like I don't know and maybe that was just me just liking something about the main character but like her communication skills were just gutter trash girl so then I also thought I'm looking at my notes um I also thought that it was so weird that she was determined to make her relationship with Yuki work. Like, you don't have to make this work, honey. Like, you met this girl in Vegas, decided to marry her, and then for when you were drunk, and then for whatever reason, you decided you were gonna, you wanted to make the marriage work. And she's like going to therapy, sending, you know, these sappy texts or whatever to Yuki and trying to figure out how she can make it work. Or maybe don't. Maybe just don't. <laughs> yeah, I thought um, it was weird. And I also thought it was very fictitious that, I mean, not that everything has to be based in reality. Again, this whole book was like a poem, but it was super fictitious that it did end up working out. Spoiler. Um... <laughs> Or it kind of works out. They like basically decided they're going to work it out. But I thought that was strange. You just don't. That's not a thing. You know. Uh, Grace seemed stable for a good bulk of the book. And her mental decline. Because like she ended up going to therapy and all that. Just happened so quickly. And like to the point that she was like not de Incapac not incapacitated that's not the word but like she couldn't function like she needed help and that happened so quickly like the turnaround was like and I was like oh okay <laughs> anyway it was a decent book if that's your genre for me it was a nice palate cleanser I guess for my regular creepy murder mystery thrillers sad you know racial books and such so I would give it a B minus for what it was um the author is black so you know that's something that I enjoy <laughs> the author's black the the cast of the book is super diverse um like, I mean, just in that, like, her friends that she grew up with were Indian, her mom's white, her dad is black, she's mixed, the girl she's in love with is, like, Japanese, and then there's, like, a whole, you know, host of other diverse characters, but it didn't feel forced, you know what I mean? Like, there are some books where I feel like they force the diversity, this did not feel forced at all. Um, it flowed very naturally, which was appreciative, um. But yeah, I think I'm going to stop rambling about it. If you want to check it out, definitely check it out. Um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, subscribe to my channel. <laughs> I definitely am reading some books that you probably want to stick around for. Um, I'm reading Viola Davis's book, so check that. Check check back in for that. <laughs> um, I'm also reading One of Us is Lying, which is interesting. I'm reading some other free books that were on Audible that I'm kind of like, but I'm thinking the next book I'm going to read on Audible, because the others are on Libby Overdrive, whatever you want to call it. Um, the next Audible I'm going to read is the follow-up to Labyrinth Lost, Wait, Wait, Wait. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to my channel. I got a lot of great stuff coming out. You know, I went on vacation to Canada. I've got some candy reviews that I may or may not post. Um, I wanted to post them in a longer like vlog situation type deal but I ended up not recording I ended up just having a vacation so we got some great content coming is what I'm saying so subscribe for that and like this video and share it with your friends thanks bye